Hey guys, hope you're all well. Today I'm going to be talking about the 7th of July 2024. Uh, I haven't checked, but I think there may have been a chance I accidentally said the 7th of July yesterday, so just putting it out there. I also probably didn't, whatever, just in my mind. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, today uh, in Minecraft wise, obviously first things first. Oh shit, I forgot to look up how many potatoes I need to breed these motherfuckers. Um, but we got the trees going and we got the potatoes going, so that's all we need. Don't we need to worry about with these villagers for now. So let's just fish on this island where the stuff will grow if we're nearby it, and then talk about the day. I have a feeling we're going to have quite a few episodes here of not tremendous um, progress Minecraft wise, but that's fine, you know. At the end of the day, I just need to get my feelings out on the, 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 the uh, previous day or the current day sometimes if I'm doing it earlier. But it's basically always after midnight nowadays, or it always has been. <laughs> um, yeah, the main objective is just to talk about the day. I'm a little bit frustrated at how slowly I'm progressing with the Minecraft world, but that's not really the primary objective of why I'm doing this. So um, I feel like obviously I could be much faster if... I didn't limit myself like how I am. But at the same time, limiting myself makes this so much more fun. And I'm like, I, I want to get back to it every day, which is probably the longest. I mean, it is definitely the longest I've, I've kept enthusiastic about a Minecraft world in my adult years. When you're a kid, it's easy to keep enthusiastic about anything for a long time. But this, I don't know. I'm sure you will feel it. it's all a little bit different. I encourage you to do something like this or, or maybe have a 30 minute timer every day and you have to come off the world at the end of the 30 minutes. It makes it a lot more interesting, trust me guys. Um, even though I do longer than 30 minute videos quite often. All right, so anyway, anyway. Today's a little bit of an interesting one. Um, I woke up at around 8.30ish. I agreed, as I said yesterday to me, all my friends to go gym at 9. When I woke up at 8.30, I was like, oh my god, I hope they don't wake up. Obviously, they sleep in. I'm, I'm, I'm obviously hoping they don't die in their sleep. It kind of sounds like that. Uh, no, I was like, oh my god, I hope they ever sleep. I can't be bothered. For some reason, I've been waking up in a pool of my own sweat the last few nights. Which is uncommon. But anyway. Um... So, yeah, woke up. I was like, fuck's sake, don't want to get up. <laughs> uh, but uh, this is why, I mean, things like accountability partners are so, like, helpful. But I texted them, and to the fucking, to my annoyance, they replied, I was like, fuck, gotta go. Obviously, not having breakfast uh, sped things up quite quickly. I was like, fuck it, let's move. Uh, got on my bicycle, brushed my teeth first, got on the bike, went to the gym, met him outside. My bike chain came off halfway through. It's like fuck's sake. Had to repair that. Got fucking oily, greasy hands. And uh, I was like, whatever. <laughs> Washed my hands. Got in the gym. And um, yeah, I was like, I was like five minutes late, but it was chill. He was a little bit late too. So yeah, we got in there. His bro wasn't there. His brother was supposed to come, but he didn't come. And uh, I was like, sick. I didn't really know what I was gonna do. I thought, oh, I might hit legs again, because that's the last time I went to the gym, I hit legs. And that was over a week ago, because I took some time off of gym to focus on, like, just jiu-jitsu for the competition that I did year, uh, yesterday. No. Yeah, yesterday. Fucking hell. And, um, yeah, I mean, I hit my head quite hard in the competition, and I woke up feeling pretty fine. But uh, then when I started getting the pump going, I could feel, like, a headache in the back part of my head that I smashed on the floor. I was like, oh, mate, I've got to slow down. <laughs> I've got to slow down. I was, I said, like, mate, I'll just follow you. When you're done, I'll do the same thing as you. And, uh, yeah, I'll just follow you. He's like, cool. I'm on this chest machine. And I was like, shit. I could feel my head going, boom, 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 boom. I'm like, I need to chill this a little bit. I know that's really bad. I probably should have been checked out by a doctor or something. But I probably just had to say shit. Go get some sleep. No, no bright lights, okay? Um, don't have time for that shit. But yeah, um, I said, yo, I've got to take it slow. It's like no beef. And then uh, I think I just did a little bit of arms. I, I warmed up on the bag too, which probably didn't help my head. 
every time I hit the bag, my head hurt a little bit. Uh, but I, I love the bag, it's so good. I mean, I don't feel the need for it as much anymore because I'm, in, I'm a little bit less angry at life than I was a few weeks ago. I'm feeling a little bit better. But when, when life is tough, the bag and like long distance, not long distance, but running with no music is like my go-to thing. I love that. Uh, I still want to do some running. I can now, I'm not in competition. My foot's really fucked though. Uh, my foot is just, it's, I wake up and there's a new cut on it and now there's pus coming out of it so I think it might be infected, so shit. Um, but yeah, did some biceps, bumped into somebody that I knew. I was like, oh yo, what's up? He's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm an accounting, I'm, a, I'm doing accounting now. I'm like, oh great, good for you. <laughs> I'm being a PT. And I, I mean, yeah, PTs like don't, they're not known for making loads of money. And obviously I care about that. Uh, but I'm like, fuck it. I'm, just, I'm gonna be a PT, I'm gonna figure fucking something out to make loads of dough. Who cares? But for now I'm a PT. Suck your mum. Um But yeah, I'm sure he wasn't even thinking that, it's all me. But uh yeah, dapped him up, it's like seeing a bit. Uh and then we, we kinda pulled out from the gym early. I mean I, I didn't I I didn't want to pull my friend out early, but it was his idea to leave early. I guess he wasn't really feeling it either. Um, but yeah, just a little light leg exercise on one of the fucking machines. Nothing really. And uh, yeah, basically it, was a, it wasn't really a gym session. Got a very light pump. Did three sets of ten on, on the chest machine and seated bicep curls, three sets of ten. And um, yeah, it was all right, fuck it, whatever. Five minutes on the bag, bang, 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 you know, whatever. Uh, met one of our other mates. Uh, like, we usually come in threes, me and two mates from school. We usually meet up and walk around. They uh, they walked with me just before I left to go travelling and they walked with me literally the day after I got back. And I was really flattered that they made that time for me, especially I think the day I got back after was Thursday. And um, one of them, I mean, they both have jobs. One of them's a teacher, so he's got some time off now, but the other one is like works for the government and he, he took his afternoon, like a fucking Thursday afternoon to chill with me and I really appreciated that. Um, and when things like that happen, I think, I'm, I can't be that much of a dickhead then. Because sometimes stuff happens to me in life and I'm like, oh, I must be such a cunt. Not not to like pull the victim card or anything. But I'm like, fuck, like, Jesus, I need to do better. And I guess I always, everyone needs to strive for better. But sometimes things happen and I'm like, wow, I can't be that bad then. You know, that's really nice. I'm, I'm really happy that these people are, I'm really grateful that these people are doing this for me. Uh, I must not be such a twat all the time. I'm sure I am most of the time though. Um, but yeah, um, don't have my shears. Uh, yeah, so I met up with the other dude, hella cool guy. He, he woke up at like four in the morning and he just started walking around because he's, he's weird like that. But he, it's cool though, he's lost so much weight. He was a pretty massive guy in school and uh, he just, he doesn't really like the gym that much, but he just understands that if he doesn't eat loads and if he just burns loads, then he'll lose it. It's crazy how many people don't understand that. But uh, he understands that, and he's not an idiot with food, and he just walks a lot. Like, he basically walks for hours, if he can, on weekends. Um, he, I think he showed me a picture today after. He's burnt like 1,200 calories today just walking. <laughs> you know? He's fucking crazy like that. He'll just walk for hours if he has to. I'd rather just jog for hours, like slightly less time. But you know, if he's happy doing it, then leave him to it, you know? He's, it's working, he looks great. I'm happy for him. But yeah, he he, uh, he stopped his walk just to have a little sit down in the cafe with us, which was nice. And um, he had a tea, basically zero calories. And um, yeah, it was cool talking to him. Uh, I, I wasn't like, uh, obviously the, the, this girl was on my mind a little bit, I'm not going to lie to you guys, but uh, I'm like, you know what, it's time to stop bringing it up, first of all, it's not all about me and like my issues, um, I don't want to be like exhausting on a group, it's like, oh, fucking hell, Tom's always talking about his problems, of course you want friends where you can talk about your problems, but on the other side of the scale, you know, if you got a mate that every single time you sit down, he talks about his problems, that would get pretty tiring, and I'm sure after long you won't have mates after that. So that's uh, obviously not what I want, but I was like, I, I'm not going to talk. I mean, if they ask about it, I'll tell them, but I'm not going to talk about it. And I actually, for the first time in a while, I don't actually feel the need to talk about it, which is good. Um, because for a long time, I was like, mate, this is all that's on my mind. Like, if anyone asks me a question about anything, so I can't really, 
give a like a, my normal answer because this fucking bitch is always on my mind. But um, and for those of you who are new, trust me, she definitely deserves the title bitch. That's being nice, my friends. I don't usually call women bitches like that. I'm not one of those motherfuckers. But uh, trust me, guys, if you knew the full story, you would you would probably come up with worse names, my friends. Okay. But anyway, I digress. Um, but yeah, they asked about her, and I was like, yo, I mean, I told them, and they were like, yeah, they were pretty gobsmacked, like I was when I first heard about it. And um, yeah, I mean, then we moved on. I was like, great, move on, you know. Um, we enjoyed, I mean, I had a coffee, I had an ex royale. And uh, it was all right. This this cafe is actually pretty reasonably priced. It's still it would still be uh, seen as high end in Indonesia where I just spent two months. But you know, it's still it's lovely, lovely little cafe. Uh, I'll probably be a regular there. It's very nice. Um, but yeah, so had that. Uh, my mate's brother also arrives. There's four of us at the table now, and we're just chatting. I mean, they are quite nerdy. It's such an unlikely friend group because one of them is like a... He's going for his PhD in physics and uh, he reads a lot into like cultures and stuff and history. And he basically doesn't believe in Islam. And my friend, other friend, sitting at the table is heavily religious and Muslim. And he always... He'll just come up with like contradictions in his faith. And he'll be like, answer this then. And then he'd be like, shut up, man. Fuck you. <laughs> it's like, fuck. Guys, just chill out. Um, it's, quite, it's always a funny conversation. I said today, like, you two are, like, the least likely friends I've ever met. And they're like, yeah, I know, right? And, but they're, st they're actually really good mates. And they'll just, yeah, no. There's, there's very quirky, weird, unique things about them that I love. Uh, it's very funny to be around them. Some of the things they say. And the brothers, when they talk to each other, it's the funniest shit. I can't remember what one said today, but he said... Uh, this really, really random specific fact about some fucking person in power 200 years ago. And then the other one went, obviously. I'm like, what? What do you mean, obviously? That's the most random fact I've ever heard. But yeah, <laughs> they're great, those two. They're very autistic, but they're great. Um... <laughs> oh, boy. But yeah, so uh, I, said, I said peace. I rode my bike home. At this point, it was almost like 11-ish. I texted my manager when I got home, like, yo, do you need me in at like 12 or 1? She was like, 1. I was like, sweet. And uh, I don't know how, but I just lost an hour at home. I don't know. I remember that I was just feeling good, though. It, just doing nothing. Or just scrolling. Um, ugh. Stretch my back. And... Um, Yeah, then it was time to leave. Got out, got out the door on time. Luckily, the roads are all fine again. There's no issues there, which I'm very pleased about. Is there any potatoes here we can take? Cool. There will be loads soon. Um, yeah, fuck it, we'll come back. So, yeah, got to work on time, felt great. So I, I, don't, I, I should be on time more often. It feels so much nicer to be on time than it is to be late. Maybe I should uh, work on that. Hmm. Um, and yeah, it's all good. Um, what am I doing here? Yeah, get the sticks, give it to the Fletcher. Get the potatoes for now. I think I have loads of sticks in my chest anyway. Didn't really need to do this. Now I've got more sticks, fuck it. Yo, Jay, you want sticks? Oh, I need way more than this. So now I'm going to have loads of uh, lamps when I talk to you. Like, excuse me, can I have some lamps, please? Oh, lovely. Right, so we just keep going sticks. This is the trade. What are you bumbling for, motherfucker? Oh, a bow. Oh, wow. Well, that's great. Um, it's the worst trade ever. What do I, what do I turn Sharon into? Oh, what is the workstation for like people that sell meat?
But yeah, I drove to work, got there on time. It was uh, pretty chill. And um, emeralds, bang. No, what did I take instead? Whoops. Pretty cool, pretty nice. And uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's take, let's get a brewing stand and take, give this guy some rotten flesh. Those of you, this is a temporary area. I know it's ugly as fuck. Sharon, it's time to start working. Lovely. Oh, perfect. Fucking hell, there's a lot of rotten flesh. All right, have some more sticks. How long until you get tired of this trade? I know that I've stopped talking about my day for a moment, but let me just let me just Minecraft for a bit, right? Leave me alone. So you don't do that anymore. Why is that? Oh, now you're giving me a discount. Huh. But now you don't do it. So what? Do you want to fight him? I'll take your job away, ho. Shit. All right. What about you? Does this mean that's crossed off forever? Now you don't want them to give me lanterns? Come on, man. You motherfucker. Do I have to find books instead? Twenty-five books. Was that twenty-five emeralds? Oh my god, that's so shit. Wait, oh my god, I can scroll. No, not yet. Wait, this village is shit. I need another librarian. Can't book to level that one up, it's not worth it. All the rotten flesh. After this, I'll go back fishing and I'll talk about the day in a straight line. Get some potatoes, maybe, maybe breed them after, farm some potatoes and call it a day. Cool. Nigel. Oh, you t Come on, bro. Two times. Oh, it's because he's not near his workstation. That's why he can't restock. If I make him a lectern, will he, will he make a new workstation? Oh, it's probably too late for that. I messed up. I messed up. It's alright. I didn't really lose that much. I'll put the emeralds in here for now. Uh, lectern. What do I need? Slabs and a book. I have a book in here, perfect. A bookshelf. Fine. Will you take this as your new workstation, Nigel? Yes. Yes. I'm a genius. Okay, perfect. Let's buy some more land. Oh, fucking hell. Put the emeralds away. Oh, my God. Let's get all the paper. All the emeralds. Let's make just this much new paper. I think that might be too much. We'll find out. I need to clear my inventory a little bit. I said tomorrow I'll do the, I'll, I'll organize the van of just tomorrow. Just give me a break. Okay. Oh, I've got loads of animals, I didn't realize. Probably not 
not even enough paper, nowhere near enough. I'm so glad you can give them a new workstation. That's so good, I'm so happy they did that. All right, uh, you, here's the paper. And then I'm gonna train the emeralds afterwards. Perfect, so now what, why aren't you leveling up, little shit? So you don't wanna do the lanterns trade anymore. What can you give me for emeralds? Red dot, red stone. Um, the fuck are you looking at? All right, we've got a new one. Uh, is that the max? So is that it's ne we're never gonna get it now. I don't, I don't get it. Um, so do we restart? Is Nigel now redundant to us? That first village we ever kidnapped. I have to, I don't know, should we fucking infect this guy with a zombie? Maybe we should. No, Nigel, I didn't say that. <laughs> so I don't get it. If I max this out, does it unlock something underneath? Or what? Let's just do it. Uh, what do you mean? Why are you making that noise? Oh, yeah. All right, more paper. Guys, sorry about this, everyone. This is how business is done. Yeah, as I said, I don't. I, I said this before. I haven't really uh, used villagers that much, to be honest, in my whole Minecraft experience. Uh, so this is sort of not a first time, but I've never done it back to front the whole thing and like had a full system. So this is sort of like a first time for me doing it all. Usually, I have my mates that just capture them and do it, and I have a menu book, or whatever, and I'll take care of other things. But yeah, it's quite quite a cool mechanic. I've been playing this game. Fucking hell. I've been playing this game since before you can even trade with these little fuckers. So, where was I about the day when I decided to go back to talking about it? I was at work and it was chill, I think. Oh no, it wasn't chill. Alright. Haven't said that yet, though. Alright, wake up, motherfuckers. Here's all the paper you can ever need. I bet some of you guys are screaming at your monitors like, mate, I feel saying I'm missing out. <laughs> we can get all the bows, some lapis. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna level this guy up for the jokes and see if, uh, am I getting XP for this? Oh, I am. We'll just see if we can do cool shit with this guy once we level this guy up. So when do you give me new trades? Now I've maxed out two of your trades, you motherfucker. Don't want those trades, that's a shit. Actually, that's a pretty good trade. Sticks. I want to keep giving you sticks. Oh, you know what? I think we'll leave those guys for a bit now. We'll just go back fishing. Get some potatoes and breed them. Uh, and then call it a day after I've spoken about my day properly, of course. So, um, you know what I haven't done? Fished in the boat. Let's do that. Huh, it's very nice. Um, so yeah, I went to, went to the restaurant, walked in, on time, I should mention. And um, yeah, unfortunately it was very, very busy, so I didn't really get to like chill with uh, like the kitchen staff that I like to a lot. I just had to go in and be like, hello, 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 and I had to go fucking smash everything out. Today, turns out I've been saying a little bit too loud that, oh my god, we're so overstaffed. Because they realised that now, and now we had like, we didn't have, yeah, we had like just about, just about the right amount. So I actually had to do my job today. <laughs> um, yeah, but I tell you what, I mean, there's a certain level of busy that actually does feel good. And it was basically that level, with nice little breaks in intensity, where there'll be like a... It'll be a little bit empty for about 30 minutes. Uh, yeah, so it was quite nicely spread out and it worked out all right. Um, but obviously I would have liked to have chatted more to, the, to my colleagues because I do like a lot of my colleagues. But, you know, obviously we're there to get a job done. I need to remember that. And, um, yeah, so that was it really. I mean, there was one dude that was, uh, they call shadowing me. I was showing him the ropes. He's just he's, He was cool, but he was a little bit annoying at times. Like, I showed him the ropes... 
and within two hours, he's going, yeah, yeah mate, because you wipe that table down, I'm going to go and do this. And I was like, mate, shut the fuck up. I literally introduced you to this job two hours ago. Don't ask me to do shit, pussy. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was having my scraps of roast. I've had a lot of chicken today, a lot of meat, loving it. I, I ate like a king today. Brought some loads of food back as well. Um, but yeah, nothing really eventful happened. I mean, it was very, very busy. Um, just chatting away to the kitchen. And one of the lovely ladies in the kitchen um, came and spoke to me. She's like, yeah, like a, I mean, she says it herself, but it's true. She's like a mother figure to me. Not not like, not to me, but like, it, it, for this for this specific problem, she's definitely like a motherly figure. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I was having a break, because they forced me to have a break, because they couldn't pay me for 30 minutes, the little fuckers. <laughs> And uh, she happened to come outside for that time as well. And we had a little chat about it. And, you know, I realised that, I mean, I'm, I'm still not 100% over it, but I am getting there. I know I've said that before. But now, I mean, with this new news that I've said a few days ago in my video, you can't make a wife out of a hoe, which explains basically a massive portion of it. You can watch that now. I'm not linking it. You can fucking look for it yourself, boy. But basically, that fucking sickening realisation was disgusting. And I still need to be tested for STDs, which is crazy to say out loud. I never thought I'd say that or have to do that. Um, oh, my God. Yeah, that just that's just disgusting. I really, If I have anything, I'm going to be really upset. But um, anyway... Um, that realisation is like this person that I was really attracted to doesn't exist and that realisation hurts it's like it's like saying that Santa Claus isn't real again, it's like learning that it sucks but you know, I'll get over it like all kids get over it um, but I tell you what that pain is actually a lot less than there's a wonderful person out there and for some reason they just don't want to be with you even though you had two months to prove to them that you were a good partner. Which I did. I was really good to this girl for just short of two months. And uh, in the end, she just said, no, I don't want a relationship. So for a few weeks, I've been wondering why. Like, what the hell? I thought I did well. You know, I'm a good-looking guy. I, I, I treated her really well. I, I was there for her when she was sad. I helped her. So I was like, what, what the fuck? But now the answer is she actually isn't the girl that I thought she's a complete whore and uh, she just lied to me again and again and not not always lied but she missed out a lot of information that would have been extremely useful to know for me to form my decisions about her she just missed it out um, and yeah she's just a complete whore which is a disgusting realisation and it's very, very surprising to me. There were signs that I was being silly moving forward with her. Um, but there weren't signs that she was a humongous, like, slut, basically. I know these words are very sharp and very offensive, but I'm afraid they're accurate. Um, if you're really interested, watch Can't Make a Wife Out of a Ho video. Which is coincidentally a lyrics to a song that she sang quite often. Which is quite funny looking back at it now. But, um, yeah. So that realisation, as I said, is disgusting. But it makes sense of the whole thing. Um, which is it's, which is quite nice. Because, for, it, I mean, I I was kind of submitting to the fact that this, this situation will never make sense. Um, and, yeah, that, that, that's really hard to get over. When it just doesn't make sense. It's like, this... Like, I'm a, I'm a good-looking guy. Not to say that too many times. <laughs> but um, I treated her really nice. She was affectionate back towards me. And, but she doesn't want a relationship. It made no sense. But now, I have the answer. And uh, it's nice to have an answer. Uh, it's a little bit scary. Because of the uh, certain consequences that it's now given me. But um, it's nice to have an answer. And it's such a shame about the whole situation because I mean I, I mean I know I'm throwing insults around and I'm calling her mean names but um, 
she's seriously fucked up in the head. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't really care about her anymore. To be completely honest, I kind of wish her harm, if I'm being 100% honest. Because she hurt me a lot. But, you know, the grown-up part of my brain hope wishes her the best and hopes she gets better soon. Um, even though when I tried to make her better, she made fun of me behind my back. But, you know... We're not, we're not in a world of uh, rainbows and, and uh, butterflies when everyone's nice. Some people are just fucking mean. And uh, get used to it, I guess. <laughs> anyway, um, why am I talking about that? Oh, yeah, because the, I was talking, the lady spoke to me about it today. And I, that's basically what I explained is, yeah, now I'm just dealing with the pain of the fact the person that I was really attracted to doesn't exist. Rather than the pain of the person I'm attracted to is such a wonderful person. They don't want to be with me for some reason. So that's it, summary, really. And it's, it's helping a lot. Um, she actually called me today uh, because she thinks I, I, I unarchived her because I'm like, all right, she's far enough down on my list now. I don't care. Uh, she probably isn't going to text me again because I'm pretty sure she's like some sort of psychopath. And she does, she literally does. I'm pretty sure she does not care about me at all. Um, so I'm pretty sure she's not going to text me again. But she did text me today asking me how much I've told the restaurant about our situation. The answer, and, and who I've told, and the answer is I've told the managers, well actually only one manager I've told like most of the story. I told one of the managers a summary because I just needed to say, look, don't put me on the same shift as her and I'm leaving when she gets back. Um, and I told the other manager the full story when she was right there with me when uh, I heard the, the second half of the story uh, by the other guy. I know that's a little bit confusing, but um, yeah, I mean, the answer is I've told... I mean, everyone knows, because the other dude who is also tangled up in this situation that I didn't know about uh, is also pretty heartbroken. He's told two people in the kitchen who have told people, who have told people, and then people have heard, overheard. You know, a lot, basically, all the full-time workers know. <laughs> and she's asking me, who have I told and who knows? And I was like, that's funny. Like, the person who lied to my face for seven weeks straight all of a sudden just expects me to be honest with her or even entertain a response. I decided, fuck this, huh? I'm not even responding to her text. I hope she worries about what people know and what they think of her. You fucking deserve it. And if you are watching this video, fuck you. And I really mean that. Fuck you. She's probably not watching this video, though. It's a little bit of a um, dramatic thing for me. Anyway, I do, get, I do become very dramatic sometimes. I should probably fucking, you know, rein it in. But, um... Yeah, so I'm not even going to respond to that bitch, you know. Uh, she doesn't deserve any more of my attention, even though I do think about her a lot, to be completely honest. I think about her more than I need to, um, but I'm working on thinking about her less. And um, Shall I wait till I get to a stack, or shall I just give it now? But yeah, uh... I just need, I mean, I've given her enough of my attention. She doesn't deserve any more. And uh, she doesn't even deserve a reply. So I won't give her that. Unless, I don't know. I, unless nothing. I'm not giving her a fucking reply. That's that. Um, I'm not going to distract myself with these guys right now. And I'm just going to talk straight and go to bed. Tomorrow, motherfuckers. But, um. Oh. So yeah, basically, she called me. And I, I was thinking about that for a bit. It had me a little bit on edge at work. Like, oh my God, she's calling me. Oh my God. But then, uh, I, then I went to the toilet and I found these things in between my legs called balls. And I grew up a little bit. And um, yeah, got on with my job. Uh, I saw the guy in the kitchen who's also, um, you know, tangled up with this girl. And I sent him a text on Friday being like, listen, dude. I know that you're like super sad right now. He's saying he isn't sad, but I can see it in his fucking eyes that he's sad. He's like, yo, I don't care about it. I don't care about her. Happened once to me before. And he's like 10 years older th than me as well. Um, and he's like, yeah, it's happened before. He's like, I don't care. I'm good at... <laughs> he kept saying, like, I'm good at psychology. It's really funny. I'm like, why? <laughs> that doesn't matter. He's like, yeah, I'm actually quite good at psychology. I know, I know how she thinks. Are you? Uh, mate, if you knew how she thought, you'd not be in this shit. <laughs> But, um, 
Yeah, I can see that he's sad. He's, he's saying that he isn't sad, and he's saying he doesn't even like her that much, but I know he's lying. I know he likes her, probably. Well, I don't know. He, I don't know. I don't know how much he likes her, but he know, I know that he likes her, for sure. The amount he texts her, he fucking likes her a lot. But um, he's pretending like he isn't sad, but I know he is. And I said, look, man, we're in the same boat. If you want to chat, we can chat. If you don't want to chat, we don't have to chat. And he hasn't even opened my message. It's been two days. I would have at least appreciated him to open it and whatever, acknowledge it. But uh, he's being chill with me at work. But I'm like, hey man, I don't appreciate that. I, I, I gave you, I, I held out my hand for you, and you fucking, you just left it. So fuck you, kind of, you know. We're probably, I mean, it would have been really funny to go to Harry Potter World with him because he bought tickets for him and her to go, and now he's realised that this girl's a massive hoe. Uh, he's not going to go with her anymore, and we were going to go together, <laughs> as the two guys that kind of got led on by this girl we were going to go together. <laughs> And I sent her a picture like, hey, we're at Harry Potter World, could have been you, fuck you, bitch. Not that she cares that much about Harry Potter World, it's not a big deal, but it would have been just funny. But he, he's too much of a fucking bonobo to do it. I reckon there's a good chance he's probably still friends with Benefits Reverse. Um, which, that's none of my business now, it's just going to end badly for him, because he's got feelings and she's going to go around fucking other dudes as well. Um, but yeah. And now I'm actually at the point now because I, I wanted to talk to him about uh, the meeting they had because we had a call, as I have explained once before, we had a call, um, like a three hour call one night talking about it and um, he's like, I'm going to meet up with her tomorrow, I'm going to I'm gonna spit all these facts to her and call her out on her lies. I wanted to know how that meeting went quite eagerly but now I actually don't care. So I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm getting better, I'm healing guys, I'm evolving. Uh, but yeah, I'm clearly not healing because I just spoke about it for 20 minutes again, but I feel better. I genuinely feel better, but for some reason I keep ranting about it. It's just a really fucked up situation. Um, but yeah, anyway, that was that. Got, uh, finished work, drove one of these dudes back, uh, one of the younger guys without a car. He's fucking jokes. And, uh, I was just chatting away with him, uh, dropped him off. Pretty nice house. His dad built his own house. I think that's pretty gangster. And, um... Yeah, dropped him off, drove home, had some fucking meat. Fucking loads of chicken, loads of lamb. It's pretty sick. Um, very full. Had a cup of tea and just fucking somehow killed about an hour and a half on, in on like Instagram and Facebook on my computer. Didn't even play any games. That was pretty dumb. But yeah, now I'm here. I'm about to go to bed. Go to training tomorrow. Uh, pretty cool day planned out tomorrow. Oh yeah, I, I should also mention yesterday after I um, finished the video... I just I checked Instagram for a bit last night and uh, I had like, you know, when someone messages you on Instagram, you get the thing, the message come up from the top in a little notification. And um, it was my ex-girlfriend, obviously not this girl that I'm talking about. We never got to that position, but um, it was my ex-girlfriend and I, I've gone back and forth with her. I sent her, a I sent her a risky text. I was like, no, the text, I just want to put a smile on her face. I don't want to get back with her, but... I want to put a smile on her face, and I saw her at the rest. I saw her at a pub. I think I mentioned, on the walk back from the competition I was at, I saw her in the restaurant, in a, in a fucking pub. It doesn't matter. And uh, I didn't. I didn't go up to her because I smelt like shit probably because I just competed for seven rounds and hadn't showered. Um, but it, it turns out she saw me too, even though when I looked at her, she was looking down at her phone. And uh, I messaged her because she messaged me like a clapping emoji to my Instagram post of the competition. And I messaged her, oh, I thought of you today. I saw this really pretty girl at this pub and I said the pub name. And she was like, oh. <laughs> She's like, who was that then? I was like, I don't know. It looked just like you, though. And then um, she said, well, if you're talking about me, that's really nice. And then we kind of, I mean, we just went back and forth for a bit. And then I just liked her message and then left it at that. And then I opened my Instagram because I don't, I don't have notifications on, on like Instagram when I turn my phone off. But when I turn it on, and when I'm on the app and someone messages me, I'll get the message. So I open the app and I get a message saying, I really miss you. Uh, and I'm like, what? And then I go on our DMs and she's deleted it. I was like, oh my God. I was like, did I just see, like, did I see that for real? Because on WhatsApp it says when you deleted a message, but on Instagram it doesn't. I'm like, did I just fucking hallucinate or what? I was like, oh, I shouldn't have said that because I, I might just put a mixed message in the head. I might be just as bad as this fucking bitch that led me along on holiday. But, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that was pretty funny. I was like, oh, at least I'm missed. You know, it's nice to know you're missed sometimes. And as well, 
I mean, I know it's gay, guys. I mean, maybe some of you guys do this too. I, I feel like such a fucking... Oh, I, I don't know. It's wrong, but I sometimes I check the views on my story, like who's viewed it. And this one girl that I saw last year in like fucking December... Um, I really liked this, but I didn't really like her. I just kind of liked her. I thought she was attractive. I just wanted sex, to be honest. Um, and we went on a few dates. And um, she liked me so much. She wanted to see me on her birthday. I was like, oh, wow. Um, but then she just went ghost, ghost mode on me. And I was like, what the fuck? It was super confusing. She like stood me up too, which is fucking such a bitch move. Um, but uh, yeah, I remember... And she lo she looked at my story. I was like, what? Because we unfollowed each other. I was like, that was weird. And uh, I looked at her page. She wasn't following me. I'm not following her. I was like, she must have looked me up. And just as a coincidence, I had a story today. So, hey, maybe she's got her eye on me. Uh, <laughs> maybe dive in there again. Who knows? It's interesting, though. She's obviously watching me or something. Maybe I came up in her recommended. I don't know. But, uh... Yeah, I hope she's doing well, though. She's all right. I don't, I don't know why she was weird with me towards the end of our little talking stage, but that's that, isn't it? Um, yeah, so that's it, really. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let me fish one more fish, and we'll call it a day. But, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, be, all right. I'll be all right, guys. I feel like I'm on the way up now. No need to be a little crybaby about it. Thanks for watching.